math. Hey everyone, this is Tom Englehart, and I want to just tell you my process of uh, doing drawovers and analyzing video reference um, or professional animation uh, to figure out keys, breakdowns, and all of that. I use uh, Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, which is free. Um, what you do is you go up into File, go down to New Flipbook, New Flipbook from Image Sequence, and this is to say that I took my video reference, which this is from Incredibles 2, I already converted it to an image sequence. So you take the first image from the image sequence, highlight that, hit Options, and I want to import this as Midground. Okay, and it says image sequence, 19 images detected, hit open. So what this does is now your animation is right here, frame by frame. All the images are there. And now it's on the mid-ground layer. So now I can take the foreground layer and do drawovers. And I usually pick a yellow color because it just shows up better over everything. Right? And so let me show you what I do. I'm going to extend this timeline out just so it's a little bit bigger, easier to see. So right now what we're going to do is analyze the video, and we're looking for keyframes, right? And keys are usually where we're starting from, where we're stopping, if there's a change of direction. So, and I'll just write numbers over here, frame one. It's a keyframe, and usually you circle the keys, okay? Let's see, he's going up, he's going up. Now he just started to come down. Right, so when he's at his peak, that's another key. So frame eight. All right, now he's coming down. He's down. And he started to come back up again. So he's down all the way right before he starts to come back up. Frame 12. Okay, and then he's coming back up. Up, and he settles right there. Frame 19. Okay, so we've got frame one, what was it, frame eight, frame 12, frame 19. Those are the keys. Now we gotta need to find the breakdowns. So between frame one, one was a key, eight was a key. Somewhere in between here is a breakdown. Okay, and usually it's about halfway. I'm just looking at the motion to see, see right there, there's kind of a big jump between five and six. It's a smaller motion here. Between five and six, it's a bigger motion. So I'm gonna say five is the breakdown and you underline breakdowns. So we have one, five, and eight. Now between eight and 12, we need to find a breakdown. It's just right in between 10, okay? Let's break down. Now between 12 and 19, is there a breakdown? Well, I'm watching his hand. His hand kind of goes straight up and then it starts to come across sideways. And you watch his elbow straight up and then it starts to turn direction. So I'm gonna say 14 is a breakdown. So really though, that's all we need, guys are those keys. So what I'm going to do is delete the ones I didn't mark. Okay, so that one, deleted. That one, frame three, deleted. Frame four, deleted. Six is gone. Seven is gone. Nine is gone. Eleven is gone. Thirteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. And eighteen. And here's what we're left with. Let's just watch. And look at that, you can still see what he's doing. You can tell all of the action, and this is just keys and breakdowns. Right? Okay, now here's one thing I like to do, is I like to stay on odd numbers. You see how all of a sudden we're on eight, 10, 12, but here we started one and five. I'm gonna add a frame. Okay, and that just got rid of our last. And I'm gonna put this one on 19. Okay, so I added a frame just so that we can stay on odd numbers. It just works better that way, especially if you're animating on twos. So we're gonna watch that. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so now 
let's start our drawovers. So I'll start with the key first key. Make sure you're selected on the foreground. You've got a yellow color, and I will just outline the shapes. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're just getting the shapes down. And this is a good time to start learning and studying design. You'll notice it's all of these poses are just a bunch of shapes. And watch, look at that back, how much curved that is. It's not arbitrary, it's a design. Okay, and then what I'll do is after I draw that, get rid of the original. Now with this white background, it's kind of hard to see, so I'll change the background color to a gray. There we go. It's easier to see. So that's the first one. We just go through all of them and do the same thing. So copy the shape. Just whatever is necessary. Right. I love this with arms. Usually it looks like a little chicken leg. Get this shape like that. And you'll notice that a lot as you're tracing arms. You want to really get this curve in the back. There's another little chicken leg over here. And there you go. Get rid of that. So now between these two, you see that motion. Let's keep going. Doesn't have to be perfect either. Okay, here you start to see his eyes. So I drew a little eyeball. His fingers here. Really, you want to go quickly, but you're also, like I said, studying the design of the pose. Everything's very graphic. You study professional animation. It's very graphic and easy to read quickly. Okay. Okay, on this one you see his head is being stretched out. see what that looks like. There you go. And the next one, make sure you're on the foreground. We're getting the shapes. I usually start with the head because that's usually what you're focused on when you're watching an animation of a character. So I like to make sure the head looks right. Okay. And then frame 15. Outlining his head. Working loosely and quickly. I always flip back just to make sure I got everything that looks right. Last one. And 
seems like the two most important things in this is his is this hand and his head. So that's what I start with. Let's see what that looks like. So there you go. You have the whole action there. And that, I mean, that looks pretty good, but we can make it look better with now what's called in-betweening. So that's just keys and breakdowns. Now the in-betweens, I want to animate this on twos. So that means every two frames, there's going to be a drawing. So there's a drawing missing here, here, and here. So there's three drawings I got to add. So um, usually if there was more drawings in between, it would matter where you start with uh, when you're in betweening, but really you're just drawing halfway in between the drawings. Um, so we got to turn on ghosting, onion skin. So between these two, I'm going to draw halfway. And it's interesting because when we're learning 3D animation, we're always told not to do poses halfway, but when you're in betweening, that's what you do. And these in betweens can be very loose, they don't have to be exact. It's really just filling in the gaps. So you see where his chin is. There's the other chin. I just go halfway in between. Top of his head. Right in between. Bottom of his nose. Right in between. Eye. Eye. Right in between. And everything else. Same thing. Fingers. Arm. See, I missed this line here and the shoulder. That's why I always check it. Okay, and then I need this in between, between 15 and 19. And this one will be very subtle. It's almost the same drawing because it's settling in. That looks fine. So let's see what that looks like. So that's on twos. Looks pretty decent, but we can still make it look better. So what we look for is where we can put this animation on ones. So slower movements where there's not that much spacing differences can be on twos, but when there's a fast movement like that, fast movement, so between two frames, between nine and 11, there's a big jump in spacing. We can do an in-between. So we turn on onion skin. And this is where we can have some fun. We can actually do some smears. So I can take a little bit of the previous frame, a little bit of the next one, kind of just make them mix together. Here's the old eyes, new eyes, and eyeballs, the nose. It's kind of stretched out where the mouth was back here. So let me turn off ghosting so you can see. This is kind of the shape I got. Looks weird, but you'll feel it. In this hand, I'm going to just kind of blend it together as to one big hand. You'll really feel it when you watch it in real time. 
So you're sort of in-betweening, but you're also smearing, okay? So this to that to that. So you see that? It's almost like it's simulating like a motion blur. Simulating a motion blur. We're going to do the same between that one and this one. You see how the hand has a long ways to go in spacing. So let me turn off onion skin. It's easier to see. From there to there, that hand is traveling pretty far in two frames. So we have this one in between. What we can do is, again, just kind of have the hand. And when you're doing smears, you want to show the path of action. right? So this hand is coming down like that. His elbow would already be down this way. So we can kind of do that. The head. Again, you can do the same thing where you do an elongated head. Kind of show the eyes before, eyes after, longer nose, mouth. Uh, let's see, without the onion skin, that's what my drawing looks like. So you see that? From here to there to there. Just kind of gives a smear effect. So let's see what that looks like at speed. So you see that? It really helps fill in the gaps. Because if you only have one frame to travel a long distance, you need to use a trick to get there quickly. And that's what smears are. So there you go. So that's how I analyze a scene in 2D take a 3D video or a live action video, break it down, draw over it, figure out keys, breakdowns, in-betweens, and find places for smears, where it's going to be on twos, where it's going to be on ones. And then you, if you wanted to, you could take this into Maya and then start out your poses like this and use this as a guide to what your poses are going to be. So there you go.